Okie dokie, so welcome to now aim number 1C. That's the third lesson in our packet, right? Okay, so what we're going to do right now is we are going to construct, okay, the angle bisector. All right. So how do I do this? All right. I'm going to do it the easy way and then I'm going to explain to you what actually happened. To construct the angle bisector, all I need is you open the compass to any radius, right? And you swing an arc, right? Then you open the compass to the length of the arc that it was created, okay? Like this one, you see that? And you create one arc here, and then you go without changing the length of the compass, you go to the other intersection and you swing another arc. So what did I do? Arc here, then arc here, then arc here, and that is your angle bisector. Okay? It's array. Okay. Now, what's so peculiar about this? Well, this angle bisector, this ray, goes from the vertex and it divides this angle into two congruent angles. Okay? So if this is 42, each of the angles is 21. Now, what is all the mechanics behind it? Well, guys, let me tell I hate to tell you, but you've been doing this all along. And now I'm going to do it the proper way. Now, if you're in a hurry, this is more than enough to, uh, to show the construction of an angle bisector. But in reality, this is what you did. Let's label this point A. Okay? And now what you did was create circle A. You created circle A. Look. That's what you did. You created circle A at whatever radius you wanted to. Now remember what you've been doing, you've been creating your own line segment. So what you actually did was by intersecting these rays at this point, let's call this point C and let's call this point D, just for the sake of argument. You created your own line segment, which is what you've been doing. That's your own line segment. And all you did to that line segment is you created your perpendicular bisector. And remember how you construct the perpendicular bisector? Is you follow the process as if you were constructing your equilateral triangle. Open the compass to the length of the line segment. Okay? Let me see. Right here. And you swing a circle. Or a semicircle. Okay? Then you go to CD right here and you swing look you swing your other circle with the same radius okay and now basically that is the process of creating an equilateral triangle okay that is the process of creating an equilateral triangle it's always been about the equilateral triangle. So now what you do is you, the intersection of circle C and circle D, okay? You connect and this is nothing more than, or nothing more than creating a perpendicular from, a, from an external point. Since you already have your online segment, now all you are doing is like creating the altitude. This could be like an altitude. I, I hope you understand what I'm saying right now. If not, don't worry, you'll get the hang of it. So the idea is the same process. You create your equilateral triangle with all the circles. And then you just join the points of intersection. Got it? Don't worry, let's do it again. If you need me to go back, just uh, tell me or I just pause it. So, this looks like a right angle. I really am not gonna tell you it's a right angle. I have no information whatsoever that it is a right angle. 
in geometry, if it's not written or given to you, it is not. So I'm not gonna assume that just because I see it, it's a right angle. So let's create the angle bisector. Let me zoom out. It's very visible, okay? So what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna say it, but I'm not gonna do it. So let's label this point A, okay, for the angle bisector. So I create my circle with with um, arbitrary arc, whatever whatever length I wanted to. I could have opened the compass all the way here and create a very big arc. So you go and you create circle A. Okay, boom, I'm not doing it. Then I open the, okay, the point of intersection right here. Let's call it uh, B and C. Okay, this is your new segment. Remember, now it's gonna be invisible segment, just like what you, what you were doing before. Uh, what you were doing before, and you're gonna follow the process of creating your right, your equilateral triangle. So you open the compass to the length of the intersections, and you create two circles. One that is gonna have B as the center. Okay, all the way, B as the center, and the other one that's gonna have C as the center with the same radius. See that? Same radius. Notice that to not uh, not to make a big mess, I don't do all the triangles as I did over here. Because I'm interested in joining uh, vertex A with where the two circles B and C intersect. They intersect right here. So this point right here is equidistant to B and to C, okay? But not only that, since basically this is the perpendicular bisector of BC, okay? But let's say my arc, I wanted to create a bigger arc. Let's say I wanted, like I was doing it from scratch and I opened the circle as to create my first Sorry, I opened the compass as to create my first circle A with any radius measure. So let's say I wanted to do it this way. Okay, guess what? It does not matter. Since this would have been my new segment, this perpendicular bisector that I created would be equidistant to this point and this point. Over here is equidistant to B and C. If the arc had been, or not the arc, but the circle had been larger, it would not matter. It would still be equidistant. Now, remember, it's perpendicular bisector. So, for the purposes being, okay, so let's see, which one was the intersection? It was here and it was here. This point right here, if I join it with Let's see, was it supposed to be that? Let's see, uh oh. What did I do? Let me see now. This was the line segment and it was equidistant to here, to this right here. Okay, it should be, let me see now. Ah, I lost track of it. Mm. I lost track of it all right it doesn't matter so this segment is equidistant from this point this point and any other point on any other segment on the sides of the angle okay so that's what it is i think there was something else but i just cannot figure it out because i think i od on the on the thing is let me see now let me just see. So I created, I created, let me see, I created this, okay, and I created this right here. Oh, okay. So let's see now. I created this. So the idea, okay, the idea is also that, let me see, 
that and that right here I don't remember I'll get back to you on that one okay so it was the angle bisector all right so now let us do the next problem it says um, construct the angle bisector okay of BCA let me make it larger so you all you could see it we're on page 18 construct the angle bisector of BCA see that okay so now let's follow the path let's see what BCA is well this is B this is C and this is A BCA the center letter okay the letter in the center okay B C A the letter in the center marks the vertex so that means that this is the vertex I have to work with okay cool then now this time I am not going to trace all the circles this time we are going to just do the uh, the same construction but with less marks okay so place compass on vertex C swing the arc which in reality you know it's a circle okay now you know you have created your own segment right here so you're gonna follow the constructions of the equilateral triangle so open compass to the length of the new segment then you make a circle I'm saying it I'm not doing it you create a circle with center B with center um, what do you want to call this call this uh, I don't know oh my god what can I call this let's call this M and this N yeah and by the way bad boy bad boy bad boy M N capital letters so that's my new segment right I'm not going to ah, I will okay so I just created my own segment so all I gotta do now is create a perpendicular to this segment from this point well follow the instructions of the equilateral triangle open the compass to to radius mn and create circle m then open the compass to radius nm and create circle m like that right but you already know what we're interested in that's it I created the angle bisector of BCA that is the angle bisector these two angles are congruent believe it or not okay let me see what else no that's it All right. let's move on to the next exercise Oh, okay, now it's your turn. So you're going to construct the angle bisector of BAC. Do it. You got two minutes to do it. Let's do it.
and that's it now notice that you didn't have to do all these circles okay you could have just done the arc open the compass arc here arc here know what the intersection is and just trace your angle bisector it says give a detailed explanation of why this is the angle bisector of BAC and what is your reasoning reasoning well first of all we got circle A okay now AN is a radius of circle A as well as AM so these two segments have the same length so they are congruent to each other correct okay then now from here I created I follow the process of constructing an equilateral triangle which is basically right here okay in an equilateral triangle as would you could say uh, because of proposition one of Euclid okay because we already beyond that in an equilateral triangle all angles are congruent and all sides are congruent okay and because all, all sides are congruent then the distance from this point I don't know what you want to call this point P I guess the distance from P to M is the same distance as P to N okay then but that does that still doesn't say anything about the triangle oh I mean the the angle bisector well in an equilateral triangle the perpendicular bisector also by acts as the angle bisector that means that it bisects the angles into two congruent angles okay so in this side is congruent to this side okay so what are you trying to say well think of it this way this is a right angle because of the perpendicular bisector of a segment correct and now since these segments right here are congruent therefore these two triangles are also congruent right and look at this this is also an equilateral triangle so what does that mean that means that this angle is also congruent to this angle okay now let's see if maybe I could have made this a little simpler because I drew circle A then AN and AM become radius we don't say radiuses we say radii so this radius is congruent to this radius right there the sides are congruent okay and because I constructed the equilateral triangle okay oh no, no not even that so this radius and this radius are congruent now when I constructed the perpendicular bisector of this uh, segment these two sides become congruent now look at this I have one triangle right here and another triangle right here so this is a right angle a right angle because of the definition of perpendicular lines or perpendicular bisector it forms nine degree angles so right away let me see right away we have that this side right here is a part of this triangle and is also a part of this other triangle therefore the triangles are congruent by side 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 okay and if two triangles are congruent every other corresponding part is congruent so this angle should be congruent to this angle this angle to this angle and so on and so forth I hope I made sense if not I'll just explain it on the board again okay so a detailed explanation of why this is the angle bisector okay so AP bisects MN okay and AP bisects angle MAN or CAB but it doesn't matter mm -hmm. so what else was no that's it 
da 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 and then you write the explanation or you know your way or my way it really doesn't matter okay construct an equilateral triangle inside a circle gee where have I seen this before All right, I'm gonna show you the easy way. So, construct from the center any line segment that goes from one end, from one point on the circle to another and passes through the center is called a diameter. So you just trace a diameter. Now measure the length of the radius. This is gonna be the easiest construction you've done so far. But it's not as it's not easy because it is, it's just easy because you already know how to do it. So I'm gonna mark a point on the circle. Coincidence? No. I'm gonna mark this point. And with this length of the radius, I am going to go to that point and I am going to mark the circle. I'm going to go to where I mark the circle and I'm gonna mark it again. I'm gonna go where I mark the circle and I'm gonna mark it again. Wait, mm, something is up here. I'm gonna mark the circle. I'm gonna mark the circle and I'm gonna mark the circle. Notice that each segment from here to here has the measure of the radius. From here to here has the measure of the radius. From here to here has the measure of the radius, measure of the radius, measure of the radius. Okay? So what you're going to do is now, I want you to connect every other point on your circle. So how about here, not with this, but with this one. That. And now, this one, not with this, but with that one. And this one, you know which one. And you have constructed an equilateral triangle inside a circle. See that? Good. All right then. So I'm gonna stop right here and then I'm gonna continue with the next uh, set of problems, okay? All right, so on problem number two right here, it says construct an angle by sector. I had done it before, but um, I think I had gotten confused. So right now I am going to unconfuse. I have no idea if that's a word or not, but okay. So construct the angle by sector. Remember what you do, right? The process is the same. So you create your circle, right? Right here. Okay. Now, you label, okay, point B and point C. So far so good? Okay, never mind this point. So now, the idea is to create your online segment, right? So you create your online segment, right here you don't have to do it all the time okay you should be able to imagine how to construct the perpendicular bisector of this line segment all right anyways so now you create circle B okay so you go like I'm not gonna do it I'm just gonna draw the part that I need that's the part that I need and now, all I have to do is join. And this is your angle bisector. Now, if they ask you, how do I know this is the angle bisector? 
Well, it does bisect angle, uh, what are you gonna call it? A, B, sorry, B, A, C. Any point on this line, on this ray right here, is equidistant, is the same distance from the sides of your angle. Of course, given that the distance is a perpendicular distance, like this, or like this. Okay? Or like this. Okay? So this length and this length are is the is the same. This one and this one, this one and this one. Alright? Okay, so basically that's all I wanted to say. Now let us move on to the continuation of the equilateral triangle. So this is what I have, right? I haven't given you any explanation so far. I just told you how to construct it. But let us define a couple of terms. So this is page number 20. And let's see. Okay, what is a central angle? A central angle is an angle. Is an angle. Okay, it's an angle that starts or no, that is, no, yeah, that is a form by uh, two Radii. What the hell does that mean? Okay, I'm telling you right now. A central angle is nothing more than an angle that starts from the center of the circle. That's what it is, okay? So it's an angle that is formed by two radii. So you have the circle right here, right? This is the center. So one radius right here, another radius right here, and voila, that's a central angle. Don't forget that. And what's so peculiar about it? I mean, why do I need to know that? Well, it's formed by two radii and has a degree measure equal to the arc the arc oh my god the arc that it intersects you know what I mean I'm, I mean I'm messing here but I already told you what it is okay so for example if the central angle is 60 degrees then the arc which is this one right here let's call this arc a B arc a B is also 60 degrees that's basically what it is Okay, let us define an inscribed angle. Okay, an inscribed angle. And this time I'm gonna be nice at writing. So, I need a pen. Am I gonna get a pen? No, I'm not gonna get a pen. Okay, I'll continue writing with pencil. Okay, it's an angle It's an angle Form, formed by two segments, okay, that by two segments, formed by two segments from a point on the circle and its degree measure
it's half it's half of the arc it intersects <clears throat> so what's an inscribed angle I'll show it to you right now so this is your circle right here right so there goes your circle right here okay so and I just decide that I want an arm angle that goes in from like this from a point on the circle right like that and it's half of the arc so if the arc right here the arc this arc right here is 120 degrees then the angle is going to be 60 because it's going to be half of the arc it intersects yeah okay fine but why do i need to know that well because that is the concept that we utilized when we were inscribing the equilateral triangle inside the circle when we were constructing the equilateral triangle inside the circle so let us go over let's go to page 21 and let's see if you understand what, I, what i'm about to say so we know that this is a circle <laughs> duh yeah okay so let us construct a little let us measure the right okay first of all uh let us just construct the diameter just for the sake of doing it okay this is a diameter a diameter is a straight line a straight line is 180 degrees okay fine now let's measure the radius okay let's call this a b in the future you don't have to but right now for the explanation purposes so this is a b okay so remember how to construct an, a regular equilateral triangle so you open the compass to the length of the radius and you create circle a you open the compass i mean yeah and then you create circle B with the same radius, right? So yeah, it was a, you know, remember it was a whole circle, but I don't need the whole circle. I just need the intersection point right here. Okay. So this right here, okay. It's uh, an angle. Do you care to guess how many degrees in this angle? I'll give you some points. Well, remember, this is how you construct the equilateral triangle from the beginning. So, an equilateral triangle, I don't want to really draw the whole thing because then I'm going to make a mess, but you know what? Let's just do it. So, this is your equilateral triangle. Now, there's 180 degrees. So this must be 60, correct? And now, this arc right here is also 60. Do I make sense? Yes, okay. Then you decided that you wanted to create another. Remember, we on the, um, there was a problem where I asked you to draw an equilateral triangle and then another equilateral triangle next to it and you were doing cha 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 well this is not what i want you to do but it's the same concept so when i swung okay remember the comp the length of the radius is this this is also the length of the radius and this is also the length of the radius although it doesn't come from the center but it's an equilateral triangle so all sides are equal <clears throat> okay so what are you trying to say nothing i just want you to understand something let us extend this side right here. What in the world? We're supposed to construct an equilateral triangle and now we are all over the place. No, just bear with me. So from here to here is 60 degrees. So if you do the next mark, this is also 60 degrees, right? And then from here to here is also 60 degrees, right? Okay, and if we continue, 
this is also 60 degrees okay now let's do another mark let's finish up so this is also 60 degrees and this is also 60 degrees so in a whole circle look one two three four five six 360 degrees so far okay so this angle right here is 60 degrees this is 60 okay so what do you mean bear with me this is 60 degrees okay so if i was to draw from here to here another line right then this is 60 degrees and how much is this 60 degrees okay i think i don't need anything else okay so this is 60 degrees now right here i have 120 degrees okay so it's okay what is the measure of this angle 60 degrees right yes make sense okay then now since we have two radii right here this right here and this right here i'm going to join these two points just for the sake of argument okay so now this is 120 so this arc is 120 i need a 60 degree angle if i am going to construct an equilateral triangle so a 60 degree angle from the circle so i am gonna go from here to here and then from here to here now why would i want to do this easy this is an inscribed angle this inscribed angle cuts an arc of 120 degrees therefore since the measure of the inscribed angle is half this angle right here is 60 okay and by the same principle i know that we created all kind of uh, drawings by the same principle this is also an inscribed angle that is cutting 120 degrees so this is also 60 and by the same principle voila this angle is cutting an arc of 120 so since it is inscribed it's also 60 degrees therefore this triangle here is equilateral okay but anyway you could do it whichever way you want to like for example right now you want to see how i'm gonna do it i'm not gonna kill myself the same drawings that have been going on are the same ones i'm gonna do i just want to do it differently so i'm gonna trace my diameter okay and then i am going to open up to the di to the radius of the circle and remember that i taught you that you could just go like make a mark here 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 and then connect every other point nah look at this same radius so if i was to do another circle right if i was to do another circle all i gotta do is mark this point mark this point it's obvious that this is 120 degrees so all i gotta do now is just connect that this iron angle cuts 120 degrees so therefore there goes my equilateral triangle <coughs> Okay, 
Now what else is there? Oh gosh, I need to copy an angle. Okay, how do I copy an angle? Um, oh, um, just copy the angle. Well, you need the opening of the angle. So, it's all about the circle and the equilateral triangle, remember? So, we open the compass, right? To any length, really, you don't have to do mines. And draw circle, what is that, B? Draw circle B. You do realize that I'm not gonna do the full circle because all I need is this part right here. Okay, so now I am going to go here and I'm gonna draw with my ruler a segment. Okay, I'm gonna call this segment A prime, B prime. And what I did over here, creating circle B, well, I'm gonna go here creating circle a prime. See that? Yes? You could do the full circle, I just don't feel like it. Okay. So now you have created your own segment right here. Remember? Own segment. I'm not going to start with this segment. So you did this. Now all I need to know is how much is the opening? from the bottom. See, you need the opening. This is a so I'm gonna open it to the length, see? This is gonna be my segment, my new segment. In other words, my new radius, right? So now I'm going to go to the point here. See, it's the same as this point right here. Okay? And remember, you do this for here, you create another circle, right? Well, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Okay? And now, all I gotta do now is take my ruler and connect the point. This is a Chucky B production. And I have just copied the angle. Okay? Okay, now it's your turn. Two minutes. Okay, you got your quiz. You gotta use your skills that you develop to construct a regular hexagon. This you've seen before. You have to remember, if not, you gotta go back and look at the next lessons, okay? I mean, like, the previous lessons. All right, good, bye.